Travis Wayne Goodsell. So, as conference weekend is going to replace Sunday school, the church had set up the Come Follow Me lessons to have the Exodus story after conference. And then an Easter uh, lesson the week after conference. <clears throat> because this is the most important scripture story for Mormonism, and being inspired, we are doing it today. <clears throat> the reason why this is the most important one is because the Book of Mormon emphasizes it in connection with the prophecies of Isaiah. Joseph Smith references it and talks about it because this is the learning of the Jews. It is an abomination to impose Christian Christ upon the Old Testament stories, upon all of the literature, after the learning of the Jews, even of other religions, because everybody talks about this, to go back in time to impose Constantine Christian Jesus upon the hero stories that are types and shadows, prophecies of the latter day man like Moses. As Joseph Smith himself talks about him, as the Book of Mormon speaks of him in context with Moses and the author of Moses talking about him. That everything that the story of Moses talks about is a metaphoric messianic type and shadow of the man like Moses in the latter days. Everybody knew the star dates for when these events would occur. This is the story of the Exodus. It is the original, well, the, the Egyptians were the original Passover week. And the story of Moses was written from the Egyptian documents of that Passion Week. And so Passion Week is just another story taken from the Egyptian prophecies. Remember, the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. Joseph Smith tells of Nephi coming to him about Egyptian gold plates. And talks about the man like Moses of the latter days. Second Nephi chapter 3 tells us that there are two men like Moses for the latter days. One of them is Joseph Smith. The other is the man like Moses whom Joseph Smith tells us in section 103 verse 16 is a Mormon to come out of the great and abominable church because Joseph Smith knew that he would be assassinated and that those of the quorum of the twelve with Brigham Young as the president read it 19 July 1840 from the Joseph Smith papers. That's all you need to Google search. 19 July 1840 Joseph Smith papers. And you'll come up with uh, uh, Mary Elizabeth 
uh, Knowlton Corre B. <clears throat> that is the most important section of the Doctrine and Covenants for Mormons, and Brigham Young didn't put it in our Doctrine and Covenants because it ties other scriptures. The parable of section 101, starting in verse 43, it explains more detail than the parable chap section 45. It is not the Jews that are being referred to. It is not Jesus. It is the man like Moses. It is Mormons who are the fulfillment of the Jews. And so, yes, the Book of Mormon was written as apocalyptic literature. None of the scriptures are literal history. They are all prophecy. They tell us their prophecy. Because Mark, chapter 14, referring to the Last Supper, of which Joseph Smith was referring to Brigham and his twelve. So it's not just one Judas. It's a whole quorum of Judases who sold Joseph out and betrayed him to have him assassinated. This is what Mormons are supposed to understand and know. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints does not want us to know this information for that reason that they have sold us out and betrayed us as the Judas a great and abominable church that they are and we are waiting for the exodus with the fall of the great and abominable church so that we can go to Zion and build it and be free and be safe from the destructions that are prophesied about for the latter days and guess what that all has happened we're waiting for the fall of Babylon of the great and abominable church so Story time? <clears throat> Joseph Smith refers to Acts because there's a specific word that is different from even what Joseph Smith says and from what the De Deuteronomy passage says of which Acts refers to. And it has to do with the word destroyed. Joseph Smith uses cut off, and the Deuteronomy passage uses a different word. Uh, uh, reprove or something like that. homepage that I have has a playlist section that I had to go back and make and put them in the right order and the Mormon on YouTube was trying to screw up that order and that's the dangerous part is that I'm hoping that Mormons do not realize that they are in the great and abominable church. That they literally, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do.
But as we know from Joseph Smith's betrayal, they purposely knew what they were doing. That they were willing participants under the orders of Brigham Young. The Danites claimed to be the judges. And so that's what worries me, is that we've got a Mormon church now that has remaining in it, having the righteous purged from the church. Because if you've not known, you've not seen my videos, or I likewise cover it, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has lost millions of Mormons. And we're not talking just a few million. No. The Church purposely has purged the Church of Mormonism. And then they victim blame by calling them the unfaithful, the unworthy, the less active, the ones that need to be reclaimed and forced back into the church, into bondage, into financial bondage. If you hadn't figured out, and you didn't watch the last week's lesson, the Mormons were put into bondage by the great and abominable church of Pharaoh. This is how you liken the scriptures. This has to do with the latter days. Joseph Smith says it's all about the Mormons of the latter days and the coming of the man like Christ, or Moses, the Christ. Moses is the Christ of the Jews. This is the learning of the Jews. And the Jews know that it says they're looking for a man like Moses. And so when a certain event occurred in 2020, yeah, they knew exactly the comparable story from the Torah, which is today's lesson. They are very mindful of this. They are very mindful and freaked out by the war in Ukraine. Because Christians, Pat Robertson came out, said, this is it, Christians. This is going to lead into Jerusalem. Sorry, the book of Revelation is messianic apocalyptic literature. It is not a literal history of prophesying of the actual Jews. Because they're are not actual beasts and dragons and flying horses and frogs and Jesus. Those are symbol representations, star dates even, giving us the precise date for the latter days. And so the Jews are very deeply concerned that Christians are going to be desiring the war to turn on Jerusalem. Not because the Christians <coughs> are evil, but because the Christians are even worse than evil into thinking that the Jews have to suffer so that Jesus can come and convert the Jews to Christianity. That's worse than desiring the death of the Jews. But like I said, surprise, it's the Mormons. It's the Mormons that are involved here when you decode the symbolism. Joseph Smith himself said it. <clears throat> and so that's why the Jews are trying to be the, the mediators, the peacemakers between Russia and Ukraine. This is also why the Pope ran to establish peace with Putin, going to the Russian embassy, 
and then came out earlier, I think it was Monday, talking about the Immaculate Heart. That's the Sisters of Lucia. Or, is it Lucia? Or, hold on. <clears throat> In uh, the early 1900s, there were uh, three sisters, uh, and they became nuns. I think they're relatives. One of them, like, cousins or something like that. I can't remember. But uh, they claimed that the Mother Mary came to them. Uh, no, no, sorry. Fatima, not Lucia. Fatima. The Sisters of Fatima. I don't get that right. <clears throat> and so they were told of the latter days. Not just World War II, but also of a greater war after it. And refers to Russia and the need for the Russian president in that day to repent and be good. Otherwise, complete and utter destruction of the world. <laughs> and so, yes, the Pope was freaked <laughs> when Putin invaded Ukraine. Because he, the Catholic Church, believes in the sisters, ladies of Fatima and their prophecy. They were designated as legitimately seen the Mother Mary. <clears throat> and even though that can't be possible, nonetheless, that's the Christian Catholic knowledge of things. They believe it, and here it is. Russia invades Ukraine. The Battle of Gog and Magog of Ezekiel 38 which Bruce R. McConkie knew of and put it in his chapter heading for our scriptures. And then gave that talk, which I put in a video for you. And notice the title of that video, For You. And then I followed it up with a, I've come full circle now. Are you paying attention? Or are you just coasting through life, going, yeah, okay, whatever. Oh, this is entertaining. Because if you don't understand what Bruce R. McConkie is telling us in the clips that I left for you, taken from that talk, you are going to literally be what Joseph Smith said was directly quoted from Acts. This is the danger we face because the LDS Church paid for the day that shall burn as an oven with tithing. When Nelson gets up for his solemn assembly temple announcements and says and a major city yet to be determined in Russia, he knows! He knows about Russia. Because Bruce R. McConkie knew and put it in the chapter heading of Ezekiel 38. They know! And they paid Putin to do it! As the Catholic Church is saying, we know Putin is the one from the ladies of Fatima. They know! They have betrayed us. They sold us out. They are purposely fulfilling the great and abominable church. They know! They know about July 19th, 1840 by Joseph Smith. That's why they left it out. 
Royal Skousen. No, because he's the one that put the footnote, Mark chapter 14, to the Last Supper. They know. And if you don't know, that's their whole plan, is to keep you ignorant about this main story that is the story of stories for Mormons. They have betrayed us. They are Judas. They paid for nukes. And if you go back and just peruse over my videos and notice the dates of when they were made, you'll notice certain gaps that's when the Mormon working for YouTube, ordered by the church, shut me down. The church knows I know. And they don't want you to know that I know and that they know. And so they've been attacking me. They've been trying to assassinate me. They've been trying to silence me. They've destroyed my life. Everybody is in on it to destroy my life. And all I'm doing is trying to warn you to save your lives. This is why I'm concerned that those Mormons who are left are of the Danites. And they are fully supportive in the church's plot to destroy the world and take over. So, shall we begin? <laughs> Introduction is more important. <clears throat> so, yes, it's coming. And we should all be fearing. Because Putin is indicating that he's willing to betray the church whether the church realizes it or not. <clears throat> but again, the church must purge. They must destroy the United States of America so that they can have their kingdom back under Brigham Young. And notice, Brigham Young was called the Mormon Moses, that his sex trafficking was called an exodus. They knew, they knew Joseph Smith was supposed to be the founding Christ of Mormonism, the man like Moses, 2 Nephi chapter 3. And so they should know that Joseph Smith knew that there would be a man like Moses coming out of their great and abominable church. President Benson seems to indicate he knew. All of the prophets know and have been looking for him just in case the real God might exist. But then they know that they can identify him and then destroy him so that he will fail, so that they will win. They will conquer God. But they purposely set it all up because it's a mighty big coincidence that the Star of Lucifer is on the headquarters temple of Zion and that there is a lion house that was renamed and then a beehive house next to it anybody know that prophecy messianic literature for the latter days 
I've been going over it with you. Samson, the Sun King. Kills the lion for his wedding with the woman who's a part of the Philistines, i.e. the Great and Abominable Church. He's getting sealed in the Great and Abominable Church's temple. And there was honey, a beehive, with the carcass of the lion for the wedding feast. Very big coincidence. The fact that Utah is called Utah. Dear God, that's a big coincidence. <laughs> Utah is phonetically the same as Judah. The symbol of which is the lion. Notice that Brigham Young used as his symbol the lion put it on the Deseret coin along with his picture and so the Nauvoo temple put the inverted pentagram at the position of the Sun at noonday because there are some important things in regards to signs in heavens as scriptures talk about it, about Lucifer. It's referred to as the morning and evening star because of its position within Earth's position of, in the solar system. And so from Earth's view, Venus is either on the one or the other of the sun. Can't say side. There are no sides in space. <laughs> and what you have then is Venus either being the morning star or the evening star. It is never a star that we see in the position of noon day. At night? Sure. As long as it's the evening star. But never, ever, 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 ever is it the sun at noonday position. Because the sun at noonday is brighter. Completely cancels out the light. Of Lucifer and that son's name is Amon Emmanuel of Isaiah that is the name that comes from the Egyptians and so all the other heroes even Jesus are descriptive characteristics so Samson son king Jesus Yah of salvation. Isaiah, salvation of Yah. Oh, it's reversed. Interesting. <clears throat> but that is not the name. The church is not the church of Jesus Christ. It is the church of Amen Christ. The name is Amen. Adam, Andai, Amen. That is the name that, to avoid the too frequent repetition, was replaced with Melchizedek, which is the expanded Hebrew word of the Hebrew word for Amen, as I've gone over with you. And so not only do you see the Egyptian stories in the Exodus, you are also seeing the prophecies that you're supposed to have for your checklist for the latter days.
so I'm kind of wondering if this is going to need to be a series. <laughs> because this is the most important story. If you hadn't figured out by now, 30 minutes into this video, if you're still watching, because YouTube seems to indicate that people only watch a certain percentage, and the the age group of which watches the largest percentage are the women in the generation above me. Not my grandma, or not my mom's generation, as my mom has died. So I'm waiting to find the obituary online because my family didn't even notify me. They've betrayed me. My mom's name is Judy. She betrayed me. Huh. Isn't that a coincidence? And so, yeah, still nothing yet on my dad, but he just scored all the insurance money with my mom dying. So that he can take care of his bills from the hospital for his quadruple bypass surgery that I had heard from the ex-wife who cut my hair and betrayed me. <laughs> my whole life is full of betrayers who should be who should have been my friends and family. My fellow Mormons. This is the fear I have that Mormons are too far gone, that they cannot be saved. <clears throat> and so, yes, it's not a coincidence that the Jews put the book of Jesus after the Torah. Because the story of Moses is that he fails. Mormons, the house of Israel, are just too wicked and are denied entrance into the promised land. But, there's the hope given to us by the learning of the Jews with the book of Jesus. Jesus is the Greek, Hebrew it's Joshua. <laughs> You're supposed to be studying your scriptures. The names have meaning and importance. And so, Yah of Salvation brings the house of Israel in the latter days into the promised land crossing the river with the Ark of the Covenant exactly like Moses wow all these things exactly like Moses and then Elijah yeah he crosses the river parts the sea and then Elisha, likewise, after Elijah, passes off the mantle to him. Elisha is Yah, or the God, in this particular case, El, for God, of salvation. Huh. The God Yah, and then the gods of salvation. The two of them together, take out the God, and you get Jesus. Joshua, Yah of Salvation. Huh, that's interesting. What a coincidence. <laughs> and, so <laughs> and so as I've instructed from last week's lesson, to remind you, the, uh, the Moses name is not Moses. It would be David Moses. It's the 18th dynasty. But it's not a literal history. So you can't impose this onto the actual history of the 18th dynasty of, Moses, or of the Egyptians. Moses means born of. So it's an incomplete name. But we have found archaeological evidence of people who are just named Moses. Born of. So, 
even though the Bible author imposes the word coming out of the water, such as baptism. Huh, that's interesting. Wonder where baptism came from. The Egyptians, with the death of Osiris. He was immersed in the Nile River, and then was resurrected out of the waters. That's why baptism refers to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. No. Try reverse engineering it. Jesus was baptized, and then likewise died, was buried, and resurrected after the manner of Osiris. And thus the Last Supper has to do with the gathering of Israel, the broken body gathered back to Zion, so the sacrament, Last Supper, and Joseph Smith, 19 July 1840. Betrayal. All part and parcel of what's going on. We haven't even gotten to the text yet. We're still doing introduction stuff. I just keep going on introduction. <laughs> that that's, might be what I'll do. Is uh, We'll make this a series of playlists. And... Uh, and make this the introduction. So, uh, yeah, because there's Oliver Cowdery's rod <laughs> that we start with, with chapter 7. And, uh, well, okay. Uh, what else do I need to put in for the introduction? And then we'll stop, and then we'll do this video, and then such and such, forth and forever. Amen and amen. I guess we can always cover it when we go over the text. Boom, 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 boom. 